Here's another solution and explanation to a really good leak code problem. These are asked in software engineering interviews all the time, so if you want to get a top tech job, you need to be studying these. This was a coding contest problem from our Discord. Every month prizes are given away, so make sure to check it out and join, link is in the description. Make sure to like, subscribe, and let's jump right in. So the problem today is robot return to origin. You can pause to read the description, but I'll just go over a quick summary. It's basically saying you're given a string, each character will be a move. We need to determine if the robot ends at the start position. Let's go over our inputs, outputs, constraints, and edge cases. So our inputs are a string of moves. This could be up, down, left, and right, represented as U, L, D, and R. The outputs are going to be a Boolean. The constraints are that the string of moves will be between one character and two times 10 to the fourth characters. The moves only contain the letters U, D, L, and R. And lastly, the edge cases. Potentially there could be adjacent moves, so like U, U, L, L, and then also cancellation. So what happens if you have up, down, and then or left, right. With this knowledge, we're gonna walk through the basics of our problem. Let's think of everything as a graph. So we have our origin point O, and for example, up will be one unit, and we'll, we'll call this a single unit. Right will be this unit, left will be this unit, and down will be this unit. So if we have this origin, and let's say we have up, down, left, and right, Pretty much what will happen is we go up one, then we go down one, which cancels out as we can see, left one, and then right one, which cancels out. Let's look at a few examples. As we can see on the left, we have a point and I've called the origin O. Each one of these lines represents one unit of movement. So let's go through the first example. What happens if we have up, down? Initially, you'd think that direction might matter for this problem, but actually it's just saying that the robot needs to return to its original starting position, regardless of what direction it is in. So if we have something like up, down, we go up one and then down one. So this one was result in true because the robot's ending at the first position that it started with. Now we have LL. So what happens there here? So we have left one and then we stop and then left again. So that will be the ending position, this will return false. Then we have right, right, down, down. So here we go right one, right one, and then down one, down one. So this would also result in false. Then we have up, right, left, down. So we have up, right, left, and down. So this will result in true as well. With those examples, let's jump into some pseudocoding. So we know that we'll need some kind of coordinate system, and usually those are denoted by X and Y, so we'll stick with that. So we're gonna have one X and one Y. We know these need to start at zero, and once we have that, we know we have a string of moves. With this string, what we want to do is iterate through it and apply that move to whatever our counters are, which are going to be X and Y. So we want to loop through the string, and once, once that's done, we want to apply a value to X and Y. So what we can do is for up, this will be Y plus one. For down, this will be Y minus one. For left, this will be X minus one. And for right, this will be X plus one. The reason we're not using four different trackers is because a general coordinate system just uses X and Y. It's very simple to apply positives and negatives so we can see what cancels out in the end. We know that when the robot returns back to its original starting position, numbers should have canceled out. So in the end, we're just going to compare is X equal to zero and is Y equal to zero and return that value. And with that, now we can start our coding. So we're going to initialize an X variable to be zero. Then we're going to initialize Y to also be zero. And this means that we're basically starting at zero, zero. Then we need to loop through the string. So we're gonna say for move in moves. And what we have to do in here is just add some control flow. So we're going to say, now we just want to apply these. So if move is u, then y plus equals one. And then we can just copy these and apply everything else that we need. So now we have, if move is d, y minus one if move is l and then we want x minus one and if move is r then we want x plus one 
Now we just want to see if x is zero and y is zero. So we can say return x equals zero and y equals zero. Now in Python, there are a few ways we can clean things up. For here, we can say just x equals y equals zero. And then up here, we can say x equals y equals zero. This is just a way to initialize multiple variables at once. And down here, we can compare multiple variables at once. This is saying is x equals zero and y equals zero. And up here, this is just saying x is equal to y, which is equal to zero. So everything's set to zero. Now I've written a few assertion cases to make sure our solution is working correctly. Down here, I've set some examples equal to the expected output. So that means that all of these print statements should come out true. And if we run it, excellent, all of these were true. Lastly, we have time and space complexity. Our time complexity is O of N, where N is the length of the moves. This is because we need to iterate through each letter of the string and apply this move to our robot. Lastly, our space complexity is going to be constant. We're just storing numbers to X and Y and returning a Boolean value, regardless of how long our string is. Hopefully that solution was helpful. Make sure to like and subscribe, it really helps the algorithm and I really appreciate it. And also join our Discord, link in the description. Lastly, check out my TikTok.